<clears throat> all right all right let's uh let's have a, a, a e3 discussion here first and foremost there's been a lot of talk about this e3 being trash right now for me personally i have thoroughly enjoyed this e3 now there are obviously two conferences that stand out above the rest we had the Microsoft conference and the Nintendo conference. Obviously, both of those were heavy fucking hitters. And then there were the side conferences that people didn't really like as much. And I understand why. We can talk about Ubisoft, which I'm not going to defend because Ubisoft's conference was an absolute shit show. It had to have been one of the worst conferences I've ever seen in my fucking life. Um, that was pretty fucking terrible. And then we had Square and Capcom, which are, are the other two that people are really talking shit about. So I will defend Square and Capcom for two main reasons your expectations that you built up for an event aren't up to those developers to to see through because they told you exactly what was going to be at these conferences and you dumbass niggas were expecting mega man to return you niggas were expecting kingdom hearts 4 you niggas were expecting final fantasy 7 remake part 2 you niggas were expecting fucking dragon's dogma or marvel versus capcom like you niggas are fucking moronic for thinking that shit. Of course, in the back of my mind, I'm like, yo, it would be crazy if we saw another Kingdom Hearts game. It would be crazy if we saw Mega Man return, right? But actually expecting that, you're fucking batshit insane. You have to think about this logically. Why the fuck are they gonna show Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two when Intergrade literally dropped like last week? Use your brain. When the fuck do we get any Kingdom Hearts games that haven't been in development for 10 fucking years. Never. Marvel vs. Capcom is a pipe dream, especially with how terrible Infinite sold, how terrible Infinite did. You niggas need to think critically. Now, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think the Capcom shit, there should not have been an event because nothing there was worth being an event to showcase at E3. But the fact of the matter is, is that they said, this is what we're showing and nothing else so anything else you niggas did to build up your expectations that's on you they told you what you was getting going over to square square is where i can i can say if you hated square's conference i can honestly like understand it because while for me i was eating guardians of the galaxy up my boy i loved everything we were seeing from guardians of the galaxy but if you weren't into that they did spend a very long time on that game so i can see being upset spaghetti at that however one thing that i really appreciated is that guardians of the galaxy is a game that is completely finished they got this shit done they're showing us the game in depth and then dropping that shit in a couple months that to me is fire i would much rather have that guardians of the galaxy shit than like what we got from starfield for example i don't give a fuck that the game you guys finally finished a fucking trailer for the shit showing off cinematics show me the fucking game if there's nothing tangible to see i don't want to see it i was at balvin stream yesterday and he brought something up that made mad sense everybody's always bitching and complaining that during e3s all we're seeing are like cinematics and trailers with no tangible gameplay with nothing there and then Square gives us that, and then niggas is bitching about it, telling them to move on to the next game. What else is next? What else is next? Type. I, I can see if you was mad that they spent so much time on it. I get that. To me personally, I would much rather have that than have them do like sizzle reels of games I don't give a fuck about or games that are never fucking coming out. Unironically speaking, this might be considered a hot take. Give me 25 minutes of that guardian shit than a fucking final fantasy 7 remake logo give me 30 minutes of guardians of the galaxy gameplay over a fucking kingdom hearts 4 logo or with sora just staring at the sky because look if they did that they would break the internet everybody would be losing their fucking mind but we ain't getting that games we ain't getting those games for like five fucking years nigga what's the point show me something i could have i'm like kg why would you show me something if i can't have it for me personally i loved this e3 especially when you take into account that the past year flipped the world upside down. And these and these developers and these publishers are still working hard to bring us these games. The fact that there's so many heavy hitters coming out this year, so soon after a pandemic, 
there's no reason we should be getting any good games this year but i'm about to go down a list of some of the games that we're getting this year that look fire kana this looks like a, a you can play a fucking pixar movie they made that shit during a panorama they made that shit during a panera bread a parallelogram they made that shit battlefield 2042 halo infinite you kidding me during a domain expansion they made those games nigga i'm ex i'm excited for fps games what is this 2009 I ain't been excited for FPS games since like 2009 and Battlefield and Halo shine shit down 12 minutes. Are you kidding me? You're reliving a, a time loop trying to trying to figure out what the fuck the, the, the unique experiences being made Tales of Arise, bro. We got zero information on Tales of Arise for like seven years out of nowhere. Boom. Here's some gameplay shit drops this year. What? And it's looking like the fucking best Tales game we ever seen in our lives. Like we got hitters. And they're dropping this year. Metroid Dread dropping this year. Are you serious? I don't know how the fuck you can be disappointed with E3. The second half of this year is about to be crazy stupid stacked. Whereas like with all other E3s, we get reveals for games that are like, okay, they're technically hype. But when the fuck are we getting these games, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like remember when they showcased Final Fantasy VII Remake or when they showcased Kingdom Hearts 3? The internet fucking broke down, bro. But it took like six years to fucking get those games. We got shown games this year that are tangibly releasing. I don't know how you can be upset at that. We finally saw Elden Ring. Elden Ring exists. Now, I'm not a Demon Souls head, but you got to give respect where respect is due, okay? And the fact of the matter is, is that Dark Souls came out and really created a whole genre. Now, I know there's going to be dumbasses saying, technically, Demon Souls? was first and demon souls really nobody played demon souls shut your broke ass up dark souls came out and that's what made the imprint on the industry okay that's not to say demon souls is a bad game but dark souls was the game that came out and changed everything okay and here's the fucked up part about shit like dark souls and other souls born games these games come out and they're all fire critically speaking the fans love them again i'm not really the biggest fan of dark souls but it's crazy to think how many other developers try to make Souls-like games and they all suck. The closest you can say that has come closest to hitting a Soulsborne game would be like Neo. But even then, like, let's keep it a stat. I respect all game developers for putting in that hard work and, and developing these games. Neo looks like looks like a different take on Soulsborne. And I'm not I'm not hating on that game, but let's keep it let, let let's 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 call it what it is. It ain't a Soulsborne game. It don't hit the same. The only niggas making Soulsborne game or Souls-like games and actually making them that next level is from Saw. I don't think we've ever seen something like that. Like usually when a developer like creates a new genre that explodes and other people like copy that genre, like usually when we see shit like that happen, we see the genre expand and get better. Not with Souls likes. Only FromSoft can make those bangers. I give FromSoft their flowers. Their games might not all be for me. In fact, I like Sekiro. I like Bloodborne. Not a fan of the Dark Souls series. To me, like, I don't know, like the, the, the art style and the whole atmosphere of the game just is boring and drab. And that should be putting me to bed if I'm gonna keep it a stackily. But I still give them their flowers. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like in the past, like e3 has always kind of been dog shit and especially like with developers announcing their games on their own time and developers just like dropping game reveals it seemingly left right and center i thought this e3 was going to be completely ass i didn't think we were going to get anything high key i was thinking e3 as a concept is just deaded and honestly it still may be going forward in the future e3 may just be a deaded concept as a whole but for right now, like the fact that we still got all these bombshell releases and shit like that, it blew me away. But now let's move on to like who won the show. And now this is very tough for me because obviously Nintendo just had a very, very strong conference. But I also feel like the Xbox conference was very strong as well. There were parts of the Xbox conference that like that like dragged a little bit, but there were still a lot of games shown that like I was I was like mad excited for because the Nintendo conference was much more condensed. I think as a whole, like as as a whole presentation, as a show, the Nintendo conference was just much 
better like overall because of the fact that like it was so uh it was very consistent we saw replaced during the the xbox conference that game looks fucking insane like we, we saw interesting we saw stalker 2 i am extremely excited for stalker 2 we saw halo infinite now obviously i'm biased i mean everybody with an opinion is going to be biased but like halo infinite for me is like up here man like y'all don't understand how much that game is impacting me and how much i need that shit so for me it isn't like a clear winner because i still saw shit from the xbox conference that got me on 10 like halo infinite got me on 10 like dead ass looking at halo infinite makes me want to cry yeah y'all don't understand halo is the reason i'm here right now you watching me at this very moment is because of halo if i don't get into halo i don't start making videos i don't start watching gameplay commentaries i don't get into like esports type shit. i don't do none of that without halo halo is a huge part of my life so to see halo like have this return to fucking form and look genuinely amazing it just brings so much joy to me right that's why like i give that shit like so much clout because like it does mean a lot to me overall nintendo definitely had a more consistent conference and they just they pulled no punches and they wasted no time they kept they kept going they kept going the pace of their conference was immaculate this was the best nintendo direct we've gotten in a in an extremely long time um and then of course you know with with xbox we saw all these like they showed 30 games 27 of them are coming to game pass day one the biggest example i'm gonna give is that back for blood game that's a game that i thought was like looks interesting but there's no shot i'm spending 60 bucks on getting that game and then they announced day one game pass now i'm like shit i may as well try to shit out you feel me and let me throw this in here too seeing everybody on twitter seeing fucking games journalists people in my chat all that seeing them all bend over and allowing the microsoft cock to enter their tight ass has been amazing because i've been letting i've been letting microsoft hit for years boys for years i've been letting microsoft ruin my insides you know really making me a fucking slut you understand and i've been telling y'all i'm like the shit microsoft is working on they're laying down the groundwork for a very big future and niggas call me crazy bro you know what i feel like i feel like that dude that's like the world is gonna end the world is gonna end and he builds like a fucking bomb shelter in his basement or whatever with like so fucking like seven billion cans of beans and ramen and shit. He's like, yo, the world's going to end, but I got this bunker. I'm going to be good, bro. I'm going to be Gucci. And everybody's like, yeah, whatever, crazy old man. And then what happens? The world fucking ends. I've been calling it, baby. I've been calling it. Obviously, this isn't to take anything away from PlayStation because obviously th their strategy has, is obviously working. Every game they sell, 10 plus million copies like it's it's absolutely insane they're going down two different business paths now i can make a whole separate video let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments i can make a whole separate video about xbox versus playstation and why choosing sides is completely fucking moronic because both of what they're doing for the games industry is super fucking important both of their strategies are different and both are working and impacting the game industry in a very positive way choosing sides means you stupid as fuck but anyways that is uh my thoughts on e3 let me know what your guys' thoughts are on e3 in the comment section down below all this shit was streamed live on twitch bird up magazine to the chat right there in the bottom right you could be there you could be that dude but you're a youtube frog and you don't know about twitch so come on over to twitch follow me on my socials and shit like that you know the vibes i'm gonna catch you guys later leave me the fuck alone